Hey, we're Jeff and Julie McGregor. We're directors of Partnership Cambodia. We live in Phnom Penh in Cambodia, the capital city. Uh, my focus currently is working with uh, other Christian workers, other missionaries uh, in this country, and also prison ministry in the women's prison in Phnom Penh, uh, doing Bible study, worship, um, spiritual formation with foreign women uh, prisoners. I'm working with uh, mostly young men uh, involved in discipleship and uh, what excites me about that is uh, seeing young people get set free uh, into God's plans and purposes for their lives. I first came in 2009 uh, in October and I came for a month to work with a New Zealander working um, in the slums. What stuck was the vibrance, the colour and smell and poverty but smiles and yeah and I just knew that the Lord was saying you'll be back. It was two more years before I moved here um, so yeah God had a lot to do in me in that time and just preparing me. Also when I did finally come in the beginning I was working um, with small Christian organizations uh, with their leaders doing leadership development and I see now that was a need, but it was also a stepping stone. God just used that to get me here before he really just worked in me and helped me gain new perspective after living here for a while. And to meet me. <laughs> and to meet you, yeah, <laughs> obviously. After some motorbike accidents and um, just a time of not being well and not being able to keep up that capacity, um, yeah, it was a time of real growing in the Lord and isolation and recognizing that actually he wanted me to do less and have more impact. And I ended up doing a Christian coaching training um, and coaching with yeah missionaries, Christians working here, also people overseas. Um, that's, that's now a large part of, of the ministry. So it was my own journey and out of that I feel that the Lord is really just wants me to focus on walking alongside people that they are healthy and effective in their own life and what they're doing for the kingdom. So I came in um, 2009 as well. When we first came um, came here we brought a team um, from St Andrews College, a school team, and, and um, we visited an organisation and uh, a Christian organisation and one of the ladies who spoke to us she said uh, in a country like this there's so much need and sometimes it's really hard to know um, where to focus your efforts. So what I've done is I've just looked for the one that God puts in front of me. And that really, that, that really kind of spoke to me. And um, that night we went to a restaurant and, and I arrived a little bit early and I was speaking to the security guard out the front and he was a young man and he was kind of just telling me about his life and his, his vision for his country and, and for himself and his family and, and he'd have a, had a really difficult um, uh, history, upbringing. And, um, he, uh, he wanted to study, but he didn't have any money. And, and anyway, um, you know, long story short, one of our students from the college ended up supporting um, this young man into doing business studies. And uh, now he's a hotel manager um, here in Phnom Penh. Out of that, uh, that kind of got round back home in New Zealand and, and people started kind of offering us money, wanting to do the same thing. So we wanted to formalize that. So we, we started an organization uh, which we called Partnership Cambodia. And um, that's kind of how the whole thing started. Uh, we've, I don't know, we've possibly supported around 30 uh, young people through university studies and a all wide range of different um, uh, topics and, and professions. And then when I moved here, uh, we, we started a student house uh, and we had a number of young people come um, young young guys, bit up, I think up to 12 at one point. And um, yeah, some of them introducing them to Jesus, some of them uh, reintroducing them to Jesus. <laughs> um, as I say, discipling these young people and um, helping them to find out what God's plan is for their lives. Discipleship's not really a program, um, but it's a, it's a relationship. Um, and it's, you know, it's a long-term thing really. And um, so I, you know, don't want to use cliches, but but we really are doing life uh, together, and um, 
you know, many of the, many of the young guys that we work with are, are really like family, and some of them don't have families. Um, a number of our guys are orphans, and uh, so in some ways we've we've built a, a family. We worship together and um, study the Bible together and train together and. And uh, we run some, a couple of small businesses together as well, which provides some income for them and, and some income for the, the other bits and pieces of ministry that we, we do. And really just raising up the next generation to, to lead in this country. Uh, when I was together with others praying for Cambodia, I just couldn't, couldn't stop crying. And um, I didn't really know what that was about, but I just started to understand that the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about Cambodia and the people here. Um, yeah, so that was the beginning. A missionary guy said to me, he said, you know, when are you actually just going to come and live here? Instead of just coming for two weeks every time. And he said, are you waiting for a wife before you come? And I said, yeah, maybe. And he said, do you have the faith that God will provide your wife uh, as your stepping out in obedience and, and, and coming into mission. And I said, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> and uh, I think yeah, it was pretty quickly after that that I decided to come. And, and um, yeah, and then I guess not long after, God connected Julie and I. We're connected with the church uh, out in the village in the province. We and the guys go out there quite often and um, preach and lead worship and uh, teach the young people singing and music. And encourage their leadership. Encourage the leaders. One of the things that we um, that we wanted to do was build a, a football field uh, next to the church in the village to gather more youth together and, and use that as kind of a gateway for the youth into the church. And um, we were just talking and dreaming together with our young people and, and not really not really super serious about it. And uh, there was one one time I was home in New Zealand and just meeting with with a couple, some friends. And um, and they they asked us if, they, if we had any needs in Cambodia, and um, I sort of half jokingly said we'd love to build a football field in the village, and and um, they said, well, how much would it cost? And I, again, the price is it's quite a lot of money, and they both sort of looked at each other and said, um, we'd love to do that. It's just bringing so many youth um, from that community into that kind of church community in the, in the village there. One of the things that God really taught me in the last seven years of being here through the things that have happened um, for me has really been about operating from a place of rest, not being go, 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 do, 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 but that he's more interested in who we are becoming than what we're doing for him. There's a, there's a, a place uh, in Kampop where um, there is a Christian retreat, like a spiritual retreat place, and it's beautiful, um, a great place to get out of the bustling city of Phnom Penh. And it's the vision and the heart behind it is it's a place for people to go and retreat, whatever that means for them. And then more recently we had contact um, from the, the people who own the, the retreat place, and they're um, they're an elderly couple, they've been here for almost 15 years as missionaries. They had this vision for this retreat place and they built it up. And they basically came to see us and, and said to us that they believed that, that um, ourselves and, and our, our group are, are the ones to carry on that vision. Uh, they, they told us the value um, and it was you know substantial, like way out of most, people most people's reach. reach. And um, they said, but we just want to pass it on to you for 10% of that, um, which is basically giving it away. And they've just asked that we would just carry on the vision that God gave them um, and, and, and had entrusted to them back when it started 14 years ago. And uh, like I mean, Julie and I were just saying last night, it's like, who are we to, you know, God's just so faithful and he puts these dreams in our hearts and um, and then he just provides. And we just know that it's so so crucial that as God gives us vision, um, we need to keep focusing on our own character and the character of the people that we're with um, so that we can continue to hold the visions that God's giving us with integrity and honesty. And he's restoring 
people, um, setting people free. Yeah, he's at work everywhere. I mean, for me, every Tuesday I get home from prison, uh, from the classes in prison and those women, you know, we talk about sanctification in our lives and becoming more like Jesus and you know, asking the Lord to help us see where he wants us to, you know, change and become, surrender. And, and I feel like with those women, I see, I see sanctification every week. God is at work in that prison and it's really exciting. And they just keep bringing more and more people, more and more women to the group. He's raising up a leadership uh, in this nation, but, but a different type of leadership, a, a Jesus leadership. You know, uh, healing people of past traumas and, and the lies that they believe because of those traumas. People who will never be known, people who will never be recognized, people who will never get famous, but people who will be up the front in heaven. That's, that's what, what God's doing here. And uh, this, this nation is going to be a nation that's going to reach out with the gospel to, to all the nations around. I, I think Cambodians are, are extremely relational people. Yeah. Um, uh, they, they've had a really difficult history. They've had, there's a lot of brokenness in this, uh, in this nation. Um, but but at the core of, of who Cambodians are, they're, they're just such relational people. They're such a friendly people. Um, I, I always say they've got some of the best sense of humour uh, in the world. It's quite quirky, um, but I love that. And um, I just, I see when Cambodians start to get set free yeah. from things of the past, um, they, just, they just come alive. Yeah, I think it would just be a real a real trust and faith in the Lord because of how much brokenness He has set them free from, how much healing. Such a testimony. Just like, just a real heart knowledge of anything is possible, not just a head knowledge.